Hi there folks, my name's Nurglewing24 and welcome back once again to FSX where today we're going to be reviewing uh, Vitavia's F111 uh, for FSX. So, um, first of all, quick shout out to the guys over at PCAviator.com.au uh, for giving me the review copy for me to check out and bring you this little uh, little review today about the uh, this beautiful beautiful aeroplane that is uh, sadly no longer in service with us. Alright, so uh, before I start nattering on about history and uh, getting in for a uh, test flight, let's have a quick little look-see around the exterior model. So uh, I'm going to be flying one of the Australian ones, the F-11Cs today. So um, look, again, uh, Vitavia has once again outdone themselves the quality of the exterior modeling and the texturing is just absolutely incredible it really is outstanding um, only one slight drawback is the flag on the tail slice in the wrong way but yeah you know we'll we'll, we'll let that one go for now I think but anyway um, otherwise got yeah the, the texturing is pretty incredible um, this was the uh, early camouflage uh, used by the RAAF f 11Cs. Uh, essentially based very similar on the uh, US, uh, US um, Southeast Asia camo camouflage scheme. Alright guys, um, as usual, um, the attention to detail that Vitavia's paid on this one is pretty damn awesome. Um, so it's got a couple of really nifty, cool little animations. Um, so you've got your usual uh, cockpit opening. So you've got your usual cockpit opening. Uh, you also have your co-pilot's uh, canopy opening as well, and the, that very distinctive uh, style that they had. Um, the uh, incident, incidentally, folks, the reason for that is that the instead of normal ejection seats, the F-111 has a capsule ejection system where the essentially the entire sort of cockpit area actually ejects out. So hmm, that's the uh, reason for that one. A um, couple of other cool little animations have been added in, so for some of the aircraft which have been modelled with the pave tack targeting pod, which we can see on the belly there, um, you have the ability to actually uh, un, uh, uncage and open up the sensor for the pave tack pod uh, and uh, return it back to flight status, or takeoff status rather. Uh, and then last but not least for all you uh, jocks out there who want to uh, get yourself some top up, uh, some in-flight service we've got the uh, opening of the in-flight refueling receptacle um, sadly though it uh, doesn't come with a fuel engage um, however there's a pretty damn good freeware one kicking around out there guys so uh, yeah if you do want to have a bit of a muck around with that in multiplayer or single player yeah give, you, give yourself a crack at this one so there you go Alright, well we better uh, lock everything back down again uh, as we prepare for takeoff. Sorry, I, I really have a, a huge soft spot for this aircraft. Um, for me, they actually, they when they were operating, um, they were operating from this airstrip we're about to take off from, folks, and that's literally very, very close to home for me, so... Uh, many's an afternoon we'd uh, hear these beautiful, beautiful engines just roaring as they sort of raced overhead and uh, went off to do some exercises offshore. So yeah, pretty, pretty damn cool, and uh, pretty damn cool, and some lot of little memories from that one. So hmm, there you go. That's my little prattling off away there for the moment, folks. All right. So now that we've checked out how beautiful the exterior is, uh, let's jump into the office. Alright, so here we are in the office for the F-111C. Now, this pack from Vertavia does cover off not just the uh, Australian F-111C, but it also covers off the F-111A, um, the FB-111A, um, which had the sort of bigger internal weapon storage, and the uh, ubiquitous EF-111 Raven, uh, the electronic warfare variant. So, there you go. Alright, so as you can see, a bit of a steam-driven cockpit, this one. Uh, so you do have a couple of different views as well. So this is just the standard uh, cockpit, uh, sorry, pilot view. Um, you've also got the weapons officer and navigator view, whose uh, his view is pretty much centered straight down onto the uh, targeting, uh, targeting moving map display. 
there. Um, despite the weapons you see on the outside, folks, uh, yeah, there is. This is not tag pack, so yeah, they're not uh, droppable, or you know, you can't use them or anything like that. But um, uh, they do affect the flight dynamics. So again, props to uh, Vitavia for sort of maintaining that realism for us as well. Uh, all right, so then you've got your sort of general sort of side views there. Lots of, as I said, with that, it's an interesting design with the whole bucket system. Uh, and the fact that that's how they launch, so with we'll the, the cruise escape, it means everything really does have to be self-contained. All right, so we're going to go back to the main office here. There we are. All right, so um, again, folks, look, the textures uh, that they've used inside do not let us down. Um, very, very high quality here. Uh, very well modelled. Um, very detailed, and you know what? I'm I'm very impressed. Um, uh, Batavia is definitely made up for my uh, my earlier misgivings in my uh, my Prowler review, uh, and this has been an absolutely amazing sort of ride with this one. So, all right, now um, because it does cover off a few different models, the cockpit layer does vary. Um, has a really good manual in there, which is uh, yeah, good old classic RTFM. Uh, definitely make sure you do that one. All right, so uh, we do have a full heads-up display. Uh, so we do have various different modes that we can kick it into. So just sort your standard one there, uh, ILS specific. So it sort of just debugs it, so it only has the ILS markers on there. Uh, this one is for the terrain following mode, which will uh, get a bit more of a uh, hands-on one with us in a second with that one. Um, and that's pretty much it. So it's just the left and right sort of ones to so just to move those. So we'll start off with the standard HUD as we take off, and then I'm going to transition to the uh, the low altitude setting. So uh, funny enough, folks, uh, the F111 in uh, the standard F111 and the FB111 was known as the Aardvark uh, in American service, um, but uh, they earned themselves the nickname of the Pig. Uh, in Australian service, not because they behave horribly, but actually because they have a very long snout uh, and they spend most of their time in the weeds. So, uh, Australian pilots definitely uh, took uh, low level flying to a whole new level, that's for sure. Um, you may have noticed down there, folks, there is a hook. Um, like a lot of modern aircraft, there is a tail hook there. It's not for carrier ops, it is there for short field performance and short field landings and stuff like that. So, there you go. All right. Um, now, this is a variable geometry wing aircraft. Now, interestingly enough, the variable geometry... Uh, we might just switch back to the outside for this one. So the variable geometry of the wings um, is not an auto-sweep feature, uh, nor is anything else. It's essentially controlled with your flaps um, buttons that you normally use for FSX. Um, the Bring the flap, you know, pressing the flaps up will bring them, will sweep the wings forward, and flaps down will sweep the wings back. Now, it seems a bit counterintuitive in some ways, but yeah, let's uh, we'll we'll roll with it for now. It's uh, it's pretty adaptable and pretty easy to get used to once you've done it for a little bit. So, uh, for example, I'm just going to press the flaps down buttons a couple of times, and you'll see the flaps and slats and everything retract, and the wing starts slowly going back as well. Um, really nice and to see that they actually paid attention to the uh, pylons and the fact that the pylons rotate as the wings move, so that's very good that one. And then if, conversely if I do flaps up you'll see them that the wings will sweep forward uh, and then eventually we'll move into takeoff landing mode with the flaps and slats start deploying. There we are. Alright, so we're all set ready for takeoff again. So we'll jump back into the office now. Sorry about that, folks. Alright, so we've got our all set. We've got our... We're going to pop our brakes on. Now, before we go, be to show... Yeah, oh, yeah, I want to show the radar. So, radar on this one is pretty damn cool. Now, the radars do vary depending on which version you have. The best one is in the Raven, funny enough, because that's its whole, you know, reason for existence was the whole memory of the electronic warfare thing. Um, but this one... So this is your basic targeting radar, so it'll sort of show up airports as well, which is pretty cool. Um, give you various distance sort of sets as well, so five miles, and your bigger range as well. Uh, the other one here is we do have a couple of other modes here. So this is your terrain avoidance system, 
and your terrain mapping. So uh, essentially, uh, if these two lines meet, the fuzzy green and the solid green, uh, yeah, you've just crashed. Um, so kind of cool for uh, for the terrain flying that we're probably about to do. So hmm. I'll do a bit of uh, memories of seeing a couple of these F111s just shooting around the uh, the foothills just outside of Ipswich. So hmm. I'm going to do that one today. All right, folks. So we're going to let the uh, set the terrain radar on there now, and we are going to. Let's spool her up and let's take her off. Now she is a bit of a heavy beast. Push her up. And release the brakes and let's grow. So, ah, oh, beautiful sound as the afterburners kick in. We've got a full burn takeoff, I think, this one. Why not? At least we don't have to pay for fuel. Oh, God, fuel prices these days don't even get me started. Alright, let's go pitch back. And there we are. Airborne. Back off a little bit on the throttles. Alright. Bring the wings, sweep the wings back a little bit as we increase our airspeed. There we go, alright, so she's gonna have now. So we've gained a bit of altitude here. As you can see you've got no uh, terrain nearby, so she oh she just flies fast and beautiful. Like she's really, really responsive. A um, bit of a uh, bit of background to the old uh, F-111, uh, by the way, folks, as well, is the fact that um, the F-111 uh, evolved in a very interesting manner. Um, like a little, like a little of the aircraft I look at, I suppose. Ones that fascinate me. Um, so the F-111 was had its origins in a US Navy request for a long range long range fighter uh, that was to be built around the Hughes radar and the uh, Phoenix AM54 Phoenix um, as long as essentially it was the airframe was built around this radar system and these missiles that's what it's built around I was going to switch to low altitude mode I think I'm going to have a bit of fun with this there we are um, so yeah, it was uh, it was built around these giant weapon systems, this giant weapon system, this giant radar. So uh, that's what it was designed for. So it was designed to operate that, and then there was a concurrent request by the uh, U.S. Air Force um, for a low-level, high-speed strategic bomber, or well, you know, sort of tactical so strategic bomber. Um, this all came about because with the Russian deployment of more and more advanced high-altitude uh, engagement envelope surface wear missiles, um, the fleets at the time of uh, aging turbojet and turboprop uh, powered aircraft um, that were the idea was that you're going to send them in and you know, slow slow and high uh, to be able to drop their nuclear nuclear payloads over the over Russia um, suddenly that was no longer viable because of these some um, you know nasty nasty sand defenses so instead they were going to look for using something as high speed very low altitude uh, so hence the uh, what was called the, back then it's called the TFX program was born. So it was a combination of looking at using the same airframe across all the different service requirements. Now the F-111B, which was the fighter long-range strike, uh, long-range fighter variant that was built around the Hughes radar and the AM-54 Phoenix, um, it got uh, seven prototypes were made, um, but that was pretty much as far as it got. Uh, it was done, and then it was uh, sort of the ongoing sort of weight issues and prevented it from ever seeing active service. So it did conduct successful carrier trials, though. Um, so it landed on USS Coral Sea in 1960-something, I think, if, I remember, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, and then, uh, but yeah, so that, that, program, that part of the program was cancelled, but the part for the Air Force... Uh, I was gonna get, I don't think I can get a bit lower, I think. Um, the part for the Air Force uh, was still required, and so that part of the uh, tender process engagement still went ahead. And hence we had the F-111A. Now, the US uh, operated primarily the F-111A variant, uh, and therefore then later on the F-111F, then the FB-111. Now, the FB-111 um, was more for strategic air commands, so that one was designed for uh, the nuclear, definitely very much the nuclear strike role. Um, so it was the one where you would have to, you know, we would carry the, 
uh, long range standoff or medium medium range standoff missiles or free fall nuclear bombs uh, uh, into uh, an enemy's airspace and deliver it successfully and hopefully get home in one piece. Um, so that, that's how it, it, but it was because it had to have a, a bigger payload. It had a strengthened landing gear and um, bigger, longer wings. The uh, long wings actually came out of the uh, F-11B actually, and uh, sort of a more strengthened sort of thing as well. So the F-E-111 had to have a strengthened uh, landing gear because of all the bomb loads. So now the Australia was the only export customer um, to purchase the F-111. Uh, and they were bought as a eventual as a replacement to the English Electric Canberras that they were operating um, uh, and sort of in the sort of defence and long range uh, maritime and uh, land strike roles. Um, so because it needed to go a long way and because it wanted to carry a different decent bomb load, um, the F-111C uh, as it became known, the Australian variant, uh, would actually require the landing gear out of the FB-111. Uh, while still maintaining uh, most of the standard F-111 sort of um, criteria and operating systems. So yeah, it definitely uh, it had an interesting history. Um, it was actually, because the F-111 program was, and the TFX program was plagued by so many issues and so many problems over the years, um, there was actually a significant delay in delivering the F-111C to Australia. So that's how Australia actually ended up operating uh, Phantoms for a few years, because uh, they were provided to Australia by the US as an interim solution. Uh, until such time as the F-111 was going to be complete and available, so, hmm. Yeah, so, a bit of an interesting uh, history to it. Uh, the UK was once upon a time supposed to get some of these, but uh, they sort of backed out, uh, and, uh, especially after the cancellation of TSR-2, is what we were going to get, but no, no, they didn't, anyway. So, enough of me uh, nattering on about uh, the history of this beautiful aeroplane uh, let's have a look uh, so let's have a look what, what am I thinking so you know what um, it's pretty damn awesome it really is um, this it, you just get yeah oh, you just get the feel like for me it's for me look I'll be honest this one's holding a bit of a special place in my heart like you know as I said having grown up just near where these were based uh, in Amberley, at Amberley Air Force Base here in uh, in Queensland, um, for me that's a, it's a pretty it's a pretty pretty big thing for me to just be able to muck around with one of these and just oh, I'd love to have been one of them anyway. Uh, so yeah, Australia was the last operator of them as well. Uh, only just retired them, so yeah, a little bit of a trivia for you. But yes, yeah, back to this. Um, look, the flight model is pretty damn awesome. Um, my only criticism is the wing fold mechanism. I think it's a bit clunky, but you know, yeah, I'm still getting used to it, but you know, got to get used to it. All right. Um, the manual is very good about you know providing you a sort of ways to avoid the stalls and how to operate your swing wings effectively. So that's uh, definitely highly recommended reading. Um, the other thing about it too, folks, is that um, Batavia added the one thing which the F-111 is famous for. The F-111 is extremely famous. Um, for a very much a signature move um, or a signature display uh, that it has which is what we call the dump and burn. So the dump and burn um, was because the F-111 is the only uh, aircraft stupid enough uh, to actually have the fuel dump pipe right between the jet pipes. Uh, henceforth when you dump fuel um, it tends to ignite and combust. Um, yeah, funnily enough, the US Air Force actually uh, banned their pilots from doing this because they lost an aircraft doing this, funnily enough. Um, but the Australians, eh, we love to take our risks, so we were like, yeah, whatevs, we're just going to do our own thing. Um, so, yeah, it, it was pretty cool that uh, Batavia had put this in, because so, I, and uh, you know what, I'm just like, going to come over the runway here, I'm going to break into a vertical, I'm going to do this one to close it off. Uh, so guys, as I said, um, this uh, F-111 is pretty damn awesome, it really is. Um, I would strongly recommend, if you've ever had a fascination with swing wing aircraft, um, you know what, grab this, this thing is cool. Lots and lots of fun. Uh, now, speaking of which, if you are going to grab it guys, as I, uh, my fuel dump pipe goes on, and uh, he's, he's got some flame flowing out behind, behind me. Ooh! Uh, yeah, so, with that guys, um, the wonderful folks over at pcaviator.com.au, uh, they have a cool, really awesome sale going on, it's going on till the 31st of March, um, where 
you'll be able to pick up three Vitavia titles for the price of two. Um, so if you're interested, um, or if anything, anything from the Vitavia catalogue, or the, this particular F111, or anything else that I've been reviewing of late, it tickles, tickles your fancy, definitely go across and check those guys out and grab it. But hurry, as I said, it does end on the 31st of March 2014, so there you go. Alright guys, look, thanks very much for watching today. Um, I'm going to recommend this Vitavia F111 for anyone who's ever dreamed of flying really, really low, really, really fast. And it just, you know what, it just handles like a dream. It really does. I wish I, there was tack back on this, but anyway, that's another conversation. Alright guys, look, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe skies to all. My name's been Overwing24, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.